Of all the regions in Italy, Umbria has always been distinguished for its sanctity. Found in the heart of Italy, it is the land of St. Francis and St. Clair of Assisi, St. Benedict of Norcia, and St. Margaret of Castello, and many others. The great number of convents and churches testify that the faith has been alive for centuries. It is here that the Mother House of the Consoling Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus is found. Our congregation was officially founded in 1961 in a spirit of enthusiasm, or rather in one of grace, that strengthens young souls and directs their aspirations to all that is great and noble. Our founder, Father Basilio Rosati, a passionist, inflamed in us the great desire to console the heart of Jesus, afflicted by the ingratitude and indifference of so many souls that are particularly dear to him souls whom he redeemed with his precious blood. Father's boundless zeal led him to preach many missions and lent in sermons throughout Italy. In this way, he was able to meet and form into a community, a group of five girls from different parts of Italy, and entrust their formation to a soul of great virtue, one of his penitents and spiritual daughters who became their mother. On August 5, 1960, the Passionists received them in their convent of St. Eutizio. His Excellency Bishop Maximiliani of Civita Castellana approved the pious union of the Consoling Sisters on December 2, 1961, entrusting its direction to Reverend Father Basilio Rosati and its future novitiate to Reverend Mother Elisabetta Pezzarosa. Their probation began in August, and on December 7, 1961, the Vigil of the Immaculate Conception, they received the religious habit from the hands of Bishop Maximiliani. After a time of novitiate, the sisters made their profession. Our small community spent its first years in a quiet spirit of recollection, nourished exclusively with tradition, which has made a great number of saints throughout the centuries. The Sacred Heart blessed our congregation and a modest group of young ladies joined, in 1975, our religious community counted over 30 members. His Excellency often expressed his satisfaction and was present at every ceremony. It was not long before several bishops insisted that we open other houses, and thus in a few years we were in four dioceses. Such an expansion should have brought many good fruits, but it was to be the prelude of bitter and painful disappointments. The spiritual life of laity and religious was being shaken. The crisis did not spare our community and influenced some of our fellow sisters. Our father's urgent calls to order proved useless. He was to drink the bitter chalice of betrayal and abandonment. How painful it is to witness the devastation of our Lord's vineyard. But divine providence allows all things for the good of those who love him, even trials, suffering, and separations. We were grieved by the serious illness of our founder. Our hearts were torn at the thought of losing the one who had inspired our entire existence with such a holy ideal. We assisted him with filial devotion, offering all our prayers and sacrifices for the one who had offered his life for the salvation of our souls. We were confident that such great charity would not allow us to be left without a guide once God called him to eternity. Thus, on February 9th, 1996, in the presence of nearly the whole entire religious community, Father entrusted us to Reverend Emmanuel Duchelard of the Society of St. Pius X, asking him to guide our congregation in the way of religious perfection. 
This was the greatest manifestation of the great zeal that was burning in his priestly heart. August 23, 1996. Only six religious remained faithful to his desires. Since the society has entered our lives, we have been invaded by a holy revolution. The grace of graces is the holy sacrifice of the Mass, which the society priests celebrate every day in our small chapel, blessed by His Excellency Bishop de Galaretta on December 16, 1997. We have great confidence in the promises of the Sacred Heart. Notwithstanding our lit littleness, graces continue to flow in the community, sending vocations and opportunities for a more expansive apostolate. In 2005, our Lord opened a new foundation in India with the orphanage. We were invited by Father Couture, the District Superior of Asia at the time, to visit an orphanage in India where a generous soul, Zvarna Vongola, with the help of some volunteers, charitably dedicated her life towards her abandoned and suffering neighbor. Miss Vongola realizes that it is impossible to live a Catholic life and practice charity without the font of life itself, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. The call to consecrate herself to God also became strong, and in 2007, she entered our community. There is an almost endless flow of volunteers who with a great spirit of sacrifice and generosity help in the school and take care of those in need. This fruitful apostolate cultivates the desire to give oneself to Jesus for souls. Providentially, the mission is also a means of getting to know the community of the Consoling Sisters. Various volunteers have corresponded to the call of God and now enrich our community. Novices and postulants brighten our life with their joy, serenity, but above all with their ardent desire to love the Sacred Heart and make Him loved. I'm Sister Maria Magdalena of Merciful Love. I come from the United States. I grew up in St. Mary's, Kansas, so I went to school in the traditional school. I went to the college also, also there at St. Mary's, and then I went to nursing school as well. And I come from a, a relatively big family, nine, nine children, and I also have two other sisters with me in the convent. I got to know this order. Um, because I was searching for the religious life, trying to decide where to go. I was looking for an order, maybe that had an interest in nursing, because I'm a nurse. And I had already looked in other orders, um, but I hadn't made up my mind, I hadn't decided. And when I found out about this place, I came and visited, and, and I knew right away that that's where God wanted me. What convinced me was, well, first of all, their devotion to the Sacred Heart. That drew me before I came to know them. Came to know them. When I came and visited, the thing that attracted me the most was the fraternal charity, the, the family atmosphere. It was, it was perfect. Uh, the greatest thing about being here is the fact that here we live a life of love. It's, it's all about love. It's all about loving God and loving your neighbor for God. And that's, that's what life is all about and that's what we're here for. Um, I am Sir Maria Chiara, 
Uh, I am French. Um, I come from Grenoble in, Fran in France and uh, I studied to the Dominican school and um, I, I, then I studied in Paris uh, philosophy and um, psychology. Uh, then uh, when I was in Paris, um, I saw one day a, new, a newspaper and I saw a beautiful picture of uh, some girls Uh, in India, uh, they were so cute and so modest and so poor and I thought, um, what is that? And then um, I, uh, I, I met a girl who went in the orphanage in India, an English uh, a friend of my friend, and she said, um, she, she told her story and um, and it was uh, beautiful and I thought maybe I have to go in this orphanage to, to see these girls and to meet them and to help them and then I continue my study and my, my studies and, uh, and then I, I went in India oh, I passed so many things but I went in India like a volunteer and uh, I, I met the sisters And I understood that I had to come in this often in this convent. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have to do the will of God and just to respond to his love because he's so so good. <laughs> I'm Sister Maria Bernadette and I come from Post Falls, Idaho. Um, I'm the second oldest of a family of eight. We live on a little farm. I learned about this order here from my older sister who entered a couple years before me. Um, when I came here for her vestition, I decided that I should stay a couple months and see what the life was like. And I, I wanted to look into the vocation. So what attracted me here was the, the, the spirit of charity that reigned amongst all the sisters. There's a big it's, um, environment, a family environment, full of love, support for one another. In the morning, we be began with house chores or taking care of the elderly we have here. Otherwise, we're on kitchen duty all morning in the kitchen. Um, in the afternoon, we have a recreation, which can't be passed <laughs> up. We have free time, which is we're either kept busy with spiritual reading, um, writing, studying, um, playing music. Um, afterwards, Our life continues with conferences, um, more elderly care. It varies a lot. In the summer, we have a lot of outdoor work and olive picking, which is a big process. <laughs> yes, very lively. <laughs> My name is Sister Mary Gabriela of Our Lady of Sorrows. I'm from St. Mary's, Kansas. I have 15 siblings, 10 sisters and five brothers. Um, I actually, her sister came and she was good friends with our family. And um, I felt I had an active vocation. And this was one of the convents that my spiritual director encouraged me to visit. My name is Sister Mary Elizabeth of the Child Jesus. I come from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I am an only child, um, I'm a novice and I've been here for almost three years. Um, I'm Genevieve Bomberger from St. Mary's, Kansas, um, nine siblings, six girls and three boys. I got to know the order because I have two sisters here and I came out to visit them with my twin and just decided to stay.
When I arrived, I remember I was very impressed by the spirit of charity that ruled over everything. It seemed to give soul to all of the actions of the sisters. And going hand in hand with this, I remember I was also very impressed by the family spirit. You could tell that everyone was very united and that they were all striving for the same goal and that they were continually encouraging one another and helping one another to reach this goal. The most important thing that I learned here is, is how to love, how to unite my will with God's, and how to sacrifice myself. I just wanted to say to all of you, all of those out there who think they have a vocation but are a little bit scared and are unsure of what it's like, I wanted to let everyone know that it's worth it, that our Lord really pays you a hundred times over and that, mm -hmm, that you find an incredible peace and happiness in the convent that the world will never know and that you can never find in the world. Uh, my name is Suor Maria Pia. I am uh, from North Italy, South Tyrol. South Tyrol. Um, I come from a Catholic family. I went to eight children. I'm the oldest. Um, I went to a Catholic school in Germany for five years. Then I so I graduated there, and uh, I studied for nurse. I worked for five years, and then I came here. We spread devotion of Sacred Heart to the nine offices of the Sacred Heart and uh, uh, consecration of families and also cons our also um, devotion to Our Lady, consecration to Our Lady. We prepare some people to the consecration. We have catechism. Uh, we, ride, uh, we ride most of the um, National Crusader uh, newspaper for children, catechism, old people, a little bit... Um, Apostolate in the village. Sometimes we pray rosary with people. We, one year we had a procession during May. Every every day in another family we prayed rosary with them, and uh, so they get to know us better, and uh, it's easier to get along. I think uh, everybody has a special mission in life and uh, maybe some young girls, maybe uh, you don't know, maybe your mission is here to, to love Jesus and to, um, to help to spread uh, Catholic faith and Catholic moral again in the world. So my name is Sor Maria Margarita. I come from St. Mary's, Kansas, uh, from a family of 11. And I got to know about the order through the Apostle magazines, about the mission in India. And I used to read them all the time when I was little. I loved them. Uh, almost everything's different here than in America, but also because we're in a convent, so it should be that way <laughs> to a certain extent. Uh, yeah, everything, the food's different, the, the customs are different. Many are more beautiful, many are, I love America as well. <laughs> Well, 
we're all working for the same goal. We all want to become saints, and uh, it's beautiful because we all just help each other get there, get to heaven. Alors, je suis française et je suis arrivée à Taqui dix ans fa. E ho conosciuto, ho conosciuto la fraternità in Francia, prima non frequentavo più la, la chiesa e mi sono, mi sono avvicinata di nuovo alla chiesa tramite la MJCF, un gruppo di giovani cattolici e che poi grazie a loro, perché per motivo di studio sono andata in Italia e ho incontrato le suore e padre Emanuele a Montalenghe. Allora quello che mi ha colpito molto era la carità fraterna che c'era tra le suore e anche verso tutte le persone esterne e una grande gioia spirituale tra, tra tutti e quel spirito di famiglia che regnava. Che Qui um, troverebbe una vera famiglia, e uno spirito um, cioè profondo di, di gioia vera e che è bello perché preghiamo anche per i sacerdoti che hanno tanto bisogno in questo momento, specialmente di crisi della Chiesa, e che anche um, col cuore di Gesù avrebbe tutto. I am Maria Xavier from Palem Kote, which is the southern part of Tamil Nadu, India. And, uh, and I am the last of the three kids in our family. My sister got married and she has got four kids. And I have a brother who is a priest uh, in Society of St. Pius X. He's a prior down there. And then myself. I was working at our society school for eight years. And first three years I was teaching and then I was helping the priest to take in charge of the school. I was basically headmistress of the school for like almost eight years. It's like a complete triangle, a priory, orphanage and school. And the boys from hostel actually yeah, the priory uh, the priests from the priory they are running a hostel too and uh, they have boys who attend our school and also the girls from orphanage they attend school and then uh, the local uh, traditional catholic circle the kids from the families they also <laughs> We are always lack of uh, uh, resources like teachers, so we'll be glad to have a volunteer as a good, we can use it as a good resource to teach our kids and to help at the orphanage like nurse, they can help at the orphanage for the old ladies and the teachers especially for English and religion we prefer uh, a yeah, good teachers from a good Catholic schools to teach our kids. So 
So at school we are almost 80 students including boys at the priory, orphanage girls and from the local parish kids and everyone. And we have around nine teachers and then two volunteers, one from America and one from Canada. And uh, basically f uh, the priest of S Society of St. Piston is in charge of the school. But right now um, the sist sisters, counseling sisters in India uh, take care of the school. I have been always thinking about occasion previously, but uh, the God's time hasn't <laughs> arrived at that time. So I had to wait like eight years or to nine years. And after a retreat, I attended a retreat actually. And I I was sure and also, and also the sisters agreed to take care of the school. And I, I wasn't sure because uh, I was taking care of the school. So after uh, sisters agreed to take care of the school, I feel it like it's my way. So I, I, I went ahead <laughs> to the convent. Um. Nel 1995 ho avuto l'occasione di venire qui due o tre volte a incontrare padre Basilio Rosati eh, perché sapevo, mi avevo detto che il sacerdote che era malato, un sacerdote che si interessava alla tradizione, riceveva diverse riviste della tradizione. Ma all'epoca io non sapevo che sono delle suore, ma non conoscevo niente delle suore, non sapevo né il numero, quanto erano, niente. E in febbraio 1996 la madre Giovanna mi ha telefonato dicendo che il loro cappellano fondatore stava molto male. E allora gli ho detto, ma c'è qualcuno che l'assiste? Mi ha detto no. Era la sera, alle 7, io sono preso la, mia, la macchina dal bando, sono venuto qui. Ho trovato il padre che era a letto, eh, le suore, erano sei o sette suore che erano in ginocchio intorno al letto a pregare e ho dato i sacramenti al padre. Dopo si è un po' ripreso e ha detto alle suore e a me ha detto ecco il vostro nuovo, nuovo superiore io non sapevo niente di questo neanche le suore una... e hanno insistito ma lei accetta e ho detto ma prima devo parlare ai miei superiori e poi da questo è cominciata una lunga storia direi storia soprattutto della provvidenza perché io non ho cercato queste suore, il Signore che le ha messe, diciamo, possiamo dire, su la strada della fraternità. E poi, poco a poco, sono venute delle vocazioni. Quando, alla morte del padre, che fu in agosto 1996, sono restato sei suore. Adesso penso nella comunità, se vediamo le suore professe, le novizie, le postulanti, mi sembra che sono 31 o 32 membri, sette sono in India, tutti indiane, e sono quattro suore a Montalenghi, il resto delle suore sono tutti qui. E adesso con l'evocazione questa casa è anche una casa di formazione.
e in più forse quello che fa un legame profondo con la, prof la fraternità è eh, uno dei scopi principali, direi quasi principali, della loro vita di preghiera e sacrificio e di sacrifici e eh, per i, i sacerdoti, la santificazione dei sacerdoti. Durante la giornata più riprese fanno delle preghiere non soltanto all'intenzione dei sacerdoti ma delle preghiere specifiche che parlano della, per la santificazione dei sacerdoti. No, certamente hanno trovato in questo momento di grande confusione, di crisi della Chiesa, hanno trovato quello che non so se ha voluto sempre, la vita sacerdotale, e che attraverso il sacerdozio la Chiesa può eh, rinnovarsi. Senza sacerdoti, senza sacerdoti certamente la Chiesa non può eh, continuare, è necessario. E poi per loro penso che una grande rivelazione fu la Santa Messa. E devo dire che il, tutte le suore che sia qui in India o a Montalenghe, eh, quando possono avere più messe alla, alla, messe alla giornata, se possono assistono volentieri alle messe. Hanno veramente una grande fede e una grande emozione per la messa. No? Certamente questo unisce anche molto eh, questa comunità con la fraternità. aspetto particolare di questa comunità e forse è quello che l'ha fatto conoscere un po' in tutto il mondo è che queste suore hanno un affanatrofio in India. Allora, dove è l'origine? Perché quando la fraternità ha cominciato a aiutare queste suore l'affanatrofio non esisteva. Dunque in breve è una ragazza indiana, eh, i genitori l'avevano mandato in Stati Uniti per studiare, eh, lei è ingegnere informatica, ha lavorato in Stati Uniti, ha avuto un ottimo posto di lavoro e a un certo momento si è detto che cosa faccio qui quando nel mio paese sono gente abbandonata sulla strada, che muoiono sulle strade, bambini abbandonati, e ha deciso di ritornare in India e eh, di consacrare la sua vita per aiutare queste persone. Poi attraverso la provvidenza, sarebbe troppo lungo a raccontare, eh, ha conosciuto, fu in contatto con la, la tradizione, la fraternità, eh, i due primi sacerdoti che hanno conosciuto Suarma, perché si chiamava così, eh, fu padre Couture e eh, padre Pagliarani, che l'hanno visitato nel primo opera che aveva il primo Ofranatrofio. E eh, quando il primo sacerdote è passato da lei, ha celebrato la messa e lei aveva mai visto una messa tradizionale, quando alla fine della messa ha detto al sacerdote questo è la messa. Certamente ha avuto una grazia particolare e quando dopo due giorni il sacerdote ha dovuto partire ha detto ma come faccio senza messa oggi? Allora per un po' di tempo, una volta al mese, prendeva il treno, faceva non so 6-7 ore di treno per avere la messa andare, ritornare. E poi poco a poco ha fatto esercizi spirituali, poi eh, è venuta in Europa per trovare forse una comunità religiosa che possa almeno eh, spiritualmente appoggiare la sua opera. Poi poco a poco lei eh, ha pensato alla vocazione, ha pensato alle consolatrici del, del, del Sacro Cuore, è venuta 
qui fare il suo noviziato, poi lei era molto lontano dal priorato, dunque ha abbandonato quello che aveva fatto per ricominciare nel sud dell'India, vicino al priorato, dove si è costruito questo grande orfanatrofio che ospita dunque delle ragazze orfane e anche una decina di persone anziane. E in seguito a lei sono uh, arrivate altre vocazioni indiane, perché adesso sono sette professe uh, indiane. La costruzione dell'orfanatrofio è tutta opera della provvidenza, aiuto da tutto il mondo, uh, anche vivere quotidianamente, anche questo è una, la provvidenza e in più certamente il grande aiuto che da diversi anni eh, sono delle volontarie. Penso che in questi ultimi anni sono passato fra 100 e 120 volontari che sono venuti a aiutare alla fanatrofio o per occuparsi di bambini o che facevano anche lezioni alla scuola per, o aiuta, o per aiutare le persone anziane e quello è di grande aiuto per le suore perché permette alle suore di avere anche loro, la loro vita religiosa se no devono essere 24 ore su 24 ore con le bambine e questo non è sempre l'ideale per la vita religiosa tutto e opera della provvidenza. Non abbiamo mai avuto dei progetti o dire fra tanti anni faremo questo o questo. Eh, sono le circostanze che eh, spingono a uno sviluppo della congregazione. Eh, uno dei primi progetti che abbiamo è di trovare una casa per il noviziato, perché adesso sono al noviziato sono nove, eh, nove suore, quattro novizie e cinque postulanti. Dunque adesso in questa casa sono quelle che sono due o tre per stanze, perché non, eh, tutto è pieno. Allora abbiamo il progetto di, se Dio vuole, di comprare una casa dove non molto lontano di questo per fare un... Eh, un noviziato. Poi c'è un progetto che risale già 3-4 anni e che il fatto di avere la messa qui, di avere una comunità religiosa, le messe cantate per la, la domenica alle feste attirano sempre più i fedeli. La cappella è molto piccola e la gente si trova fuori sulle stanze che sono vicino alla cappella. Allora, da anni abbiamo cominciato delle procedure, soprattutto amministrative, che sono molto lunghe e speriamo poter costruire qui una chiesa per almeno un centinaio di fedeli. Poi, sulla richiesta di padre Pagliarani, nostro subito generale, lui ha chiesto alle suore di pensare di aprire una casa negli Stati Uniti. Il fatto che adesso sono 11 americane qui, dunque è anche giusto pensare a loro e per questo fra l'altro che siamo presenti attualmente in Stati Uniti per questo viaggio per pensare a una futura casa dove le suore possono venire e a compiere il loro, loro apostolato, cioè la loro vita religiosa. to take the opportunity to thank our parents for the generous gift of their daughters in the service of Christ the King. We would like to thank all the priests who have guided us and who have de tirelessly dedicated their lives for souls and who have enkindled in us a profound love 
for the faith, for the liturgy, and who have given us their great zeal for the salvation of souls. We are praying for you, and we count on your prayers as well. Our doors are always open for any young ladies who would like to visit us. Jesus Maria José, Vida no el cor, Le cor en anima mía. Jesús Maria José, Jesus Maria Joseph, Vida 